welcome to the, to the expression of the Father's love. I'm happy that you are able to join me today. May the Lord Richard bless you and your family. Let me take the opportunity at this time to extend a happy Father's Day to all the fathers in Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to encourage you to continue to be the father that God expects you to be. Continue to be an example to your children. Continue to train them up in the ways of the Lord. Continue to show them love. Continue to be a good role model for your father, for your children. I want to encourage you today, take time to spend with your family today and to show them your care and your love. God really loves you. He is the father of all fathers. And I want to say to God be the glory, great things he has done. Welcome again. And I want you to join with me in prayer as we commence today. Father, we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. I want to thank you for being our Father and our Lord. And even at this point in this time, I want to say, Lord, how we love you and we appreciate you today. And I ask God that you continue to open the hearts of people so they can experience the love of God. Thank you today for your grace and mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in to the expression of the Father's love. Today, I want to talk to us about the reason why God shut in Noah. As we shared last week, this is part two of last week's sermon, Stop Striving with God. And last week we went through, in spite of God's goodness, his admonition, and the revelation of his message, people continue to reject God. And as a result, God's wrath was poured out upon the face of the whole earth. Today I want to look closer into the reason why God would have shut in Noah. Let us read from Genesis chapter number 7 and verse 16. It says, And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Father, I thank you today, and I pray that your word will be received today in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to look at the reason why God would have shut in Noah. And it is no secret why he did it. We went through the whole episode last week in, in explaining to us, in spite of God's plea, man continued to strive with God by going his own way by doing what he desired to do. But it comes a time when God said, enough is enough. And God shut in Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives, and every animal that God had commanded to go into the ark. And I want to give you three reasons why God would have shut in Noah. First of all, he shut in Noah in order to save the obedient. God desires to save the obedient. The Bible says when they went into the ark, God himself closed the door. Because God was waiting. Because Noah was the only man that found grace in the eyes of God. And as a result, God intention that he would save him. The same is true. If we would find grace in the eyes of God, if we would be obedient to him, if we would follow his word, he will indeed save us. He will indeed rescue us. He would not allow any harm or destruction to come to our lives. And this is the intent of God. This is the desire of God. This is the purpose of God. To save those who are obedient to him. When he looked upon the face of the earth, 
It was filled with violence. It was corrupt. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come up before me. And God will not stand idly by and allow the whole human race to be destroyed by sin and immorality. And as a result, God ordered Noah to build an ark for the saving of his whole house. And the Bible says that he shot him in in order to save him. And that's the will of God. Anybody who will obey God, he will seek to save. Anybody who entrusts their life in his hand, he will indeed save. And no harm will come to you. No destruction will come to your life. You cannot save yourself. We expect as we put our life in his hand that he will keep us safe. There are two illustrations in the whole Bible that are very clear to me and to every reader how God will indeed save his people. The Bible records in the book of Genesis chapter 19. In fact, from chapter 18 following chapter 19, records when God came down himself and was heading to Sodom and Gomorrah, before he eventually went there, he passed to increase and to inform Abraham that he will indeed become the father of many nations. And to inform Abraham of his intention to visit Lot because this, to visit Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah because the sins of the people have come up before him. And Abraham began to speak to God. And here the phrase and the question Abraham asked God, would the God of all the earth not do right? Would you indeed judge the righteous with the wicked? Far be it from God. And that statement is so true today. That God will not judge the righteous with the wicked. What he will do, he will indeed save the righteous before his judgment is expended. And that was clear. The Bible tells us when they went into Sodom and Gomorrah, the sin was so, the so great that every young man from every quarter came to visit Lot's house because of the visitors. And they wanted to break down the door. And the angel says, Lot, have you here any beside thee? Warn them, get them out of this place because God is going to destroy this land. And the Bible tells us that when the Lot went to his relative, it seems as though it was tales. And the next day, the angel hastened Lot, says, get out of this place, because we cannot do anything, except you go out of this place, and they held their hand, and let them out. Why was that important? Because God will never, Destroy the righteous with the wicked. He will indeed save the righteous. And that is true today. If you will obey God. If you will accept Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. And walk in his ways. God will not allow you to be eternally destroyed. God will not allow you to receive the judgment of God. And the wrath of God. No, sir. He will indeed save the righteous. We also see in this very account that God waited until Noah went into the ark before 
he released the wrath of God. The Bible says as Noah went in the selfsame day that Noah went into the ark, God poured out his wrath. I know what I'm saying to you. If you put your life in his hand, you are guaranteed safety, eternal safety. The Bible reminds us that the wages of sin is death. Eternal death. That's a punishment and the penalty for a life that continues to live in sin. But the grace of God, but the gift of God is eternal life. And it only comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. In John chapter 10 and verse 9, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Yeah. He wants to save humanity. But the only way he can save you is if you trust and obey him with your life. Is if you obey him and entrust your life in his hand. Just as Noah did, he will indeed save the obedient. So the very day that Noah and his family entered the ark, God was now free to release his wrath upon the face of the earth. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 1, verse 5 and 6, the Bible informs us, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. You got to understand that is the intent of God to always separate the sheep from the goat. He will never judge the righteous with the unrighteous. That's why God is long-suffering with us today. That's why God is bearing us, hoping that man would understand that God hates sin, and he will judge sin. But before he does that, he will always express his love. He will always show man grace. He will always show man the way out. Because he wants to save everyone who would come to him. Would you come to him today? He will save the obedient. If you repent of your sins, if you acknowledge that you're a sinner, if you obey his word, you are guaranteed to be saved. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he shed his precious blood. He came down from heaven and died for your sins because all men were guilty before God. We couldn't save ourselves. But if you recognize yourself as a sinner and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn my life around. I'm going to put my life in your hand. I'm going to obey you because you are calling me everywhere to repent. I will respond. And God will save you. And God will keep you safe eternally because he promised whoever comes to him he will in no wise cast off. Would you come today? Would you recognize that God is a merciful God and he does not want to punish you eternally? He wants to save you. But he can only save you if you obey him. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18 to 19, if you are willing and obedient, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, the sword of the Lord, the judgment of God is going to fall on you. God loved this human race and he wants to save you. But he can only save you if you obey him. Every time you hear the gospel, it is God knocking on your heart. Would you open the door of your life and let it in?
let him in. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, he stands at the door and knock. If any man hear his voice and open that door, he will come in and sup with you and you with me. This is his desire. If you invite him in and entertain him and allow him to fellowship and show you his kingdom and explain it to you, one day he will invite you to his eternal home where you will spend the rest of your life with him. This is his desire, to save humanity. The Bible also tells us the other reason why he would have shut Noah in so that Noah and his family will not taste his wrath. Noah and his family will not taste his wrath. The Bible says that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained until the water covered the whole face of the earth. If you read verse 20 of that ver of Genesis chapter 7, it says that 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered. 15 cubits upward from the top of the highest mountain. It's about 22 feet, 22 plus feet above the highest mountain. God was satisfied that he has purged the old earth. The violence and the corruption that was found in it. He wanted to ensure that no living flesh that was outside of the ark remained alive. The same God who is merciful is also a God of judgment. The same God who is loving, if he is rejected, if he is treated lightly, if he is scoffed at, if he is refused, will release his wrath. Fifteen cubits high above the highest mountains the waters prevailed, and every flesh that the breath of life was in died, died. What is the message for us today? The message is clear. God hates sin, but he loved the sinner. The message is clear, that if you refuse him, one day, he will refuse you. The message is clear. That if you obey him, you will be saved. But if you disobey, you will be judged. Why am I saying this today? Because many people take comfort in the fact. Because they religiously go to church on Sunday. That they are saved. Many people take comfort in the fact. Because they would religiously read the Bible, it's okay. Many people take comfort in the fact because they, they often do good deeds. They are safe. But the only thing they refuse to commit their lives to is to give Jesus Christ the opportunity to become Lord of their lives. Because many people enjoy the pleasures of this world. And they think that if they surrender their lives to God, they will lose out on friends. They will lose out of, on entertainment. They will lose out on the attractions of the world that they seem to be so addicted to. But let me let you know, that he that liveth in pleasure is dead while he liveth. You may be associated with a religion. If you are, that is good. But our moral standards, our goodness, 
all the acts of kindness that we would have done. If we fail to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives and live for him, those goodness, those acts of righteousness are as filthy rags. Jesus Christ died on the cross to give you life as long as you would accept him as your Lord. And if you accept him as your Lord, it behoves each and every one of us to follow him, to obey him, to do what he says. You cannot call him Lord and do not obey him. You cannot call him Lord and do otherwise. You cannot call him Lord and forsake him. Jesus Christ loves you. And he do not want you to perish. He's a long-suffering God. He's a patient God. And he loves you. He wants me to inform you today that he loves you. And his coming is closer than you think. People plan their whole life and leave God out. They plan their career path. They plan the estimated time they want to get married. They plan the time when they want to go to a trip. They plan their family life. They plan every aspect of their life. And sadly, some have left out God. They say they pray on morning, but during their life, during the the day they live carelessly. No commitment to God. No commitment to the Savior. When they're in trouble or their corner, they look for God. They use God conveniently. But God is calling men everywhere to repent and turn to Him again. The hour is late. He wants to save you before it is eternally too late. The thief come not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The people in Noah's time, they took it, the message of Noah, for granted. They continue their life as usual. They ignore the most important message. Many of them went ahead, build their homes, marry, and continue life as usual. Not knowing that the judgment of God was so imminent. They may have had very good plans for their future. But they fail to accept Jesus Christ and to obey Noah. Get into the ark was a simple command. Get into the ark was a clear instruction. In order to save themselves. And God says, the end of all flesh is come before me. The very day that Noah entered the ark, the self same time, God reigned and destroyed the whole face of the human race. The reason God shut the door is his order to save his people that were obedient. And the other reason why God would have shut the door so he can now expend his wrath, expend his wrath upon the whole face of the earth. I'm calling upon you today. You have heard messages after messages. What have you done with the Lord Jesus Christ? Should he come today? Should that door be closed today? Where would you spend the rest of your eternal life? Your career would be meaningless then. 
all your plans and agenda would be meaningless then. If you would have failed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to embrace yourself for the wrath of God. I want to say to you today, it is so easy to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are here and you are willing to do just that, please say after me, Dear Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I invite you into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name. If you have done that, I want to give you five instructions. One, Find a good Bible and read it and prepare to do what it says. I want to encourage you to pray to God daily. Communication with God is important. You build fellowship with Him. I want you to find a good Bible-believing church in your area and go there regularly. I want to also encourage you to tell somebody of a decision you have made. That is important, especially a pastor or a leader. They will guide you into the steps to ensure that you be committed to God. And finally, I want you to go all the way to God. Get water baptized. Follow Jesus all the way. And go in grace. May the Lord richly bless you. And thank you for tuning in to the expression of the Father's love. Until next time, the grace of Almighty God be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. This program comes to you compliments of the Tobago Inspirational Network. To support this and other programs, we encourage you to give to TIN. Contributions can be made at any First Citizens Bank at account number 203-4679. We thank you for your support.